Hello, everybody. Um, Lerma County Commissioner Jay Shabik Dowling. We're here uh, for our legislative um, committee meeting of the Forest Health Council, and we have a full agenda today, um, and we have a lot to cover. So um, I will go ahead and turn it to Courtney because we're going to confirm and talk about who has confirmed um, their member their attendance as a voting member, and then we'll take roll call. Thanks, Courtney. Good morning, everybody. So here's a quick review of the people who are still, um, who have decided to stay on the committee as voting members. We have uh, Samantha Albert, Christy Belton, Commissioner Hillary Cooper, Pat Dorsey, Matt McCombs, Commissioner Jody Shattuck McNally, Mark Morgan, Julie Stinsel, and Sylvan White Skunk. Well, we haven't heard from Sylvan yet, but I'm leaving him on this list until we hear otherwise. And then Christina Beery and Paige Lewis have decided to transition um, away from voting members and rather just um, attend the committee meeting when they're able. So I'll go ahead and, and take roll now. Uh, Samantha Albert. Present. Christy Belton. I'm here. I called in. I'm 970 Great. Thanks, Christy. Commissioner Hillary Cooper. Pat Dorsey. Director Matt McCombs. Present. Commissioner Jody Shattuck McNally. Present. Mark Morgan. Here. Julie Stencil. Good morning, I'm here. And Sylvan White Skunk. So our new uh, quorum number is five members and we have over five members. And so today we do have quorum, which is great. Wonderful. Thank you, everyone. Um, so we'll move on to approval of the minutes. Does anyone have any adjustments or changes to the minutes? Uh, um, just a reminder, we were not able to record that session. Um, and by the way, I'm at the state capitol again today. Um, and so that's why I'm moving around. And uh, I was here for a legislative breakfast. We've been meeting with all the legislators this morning. But um, so if I'm moving around, you understand why. Um, but we did not, we're not able to record it. So that's why the minutes are, I think, a little more detailed and different than usual. So does anyone have any changes or corrections? <clears throat> okay, I would uh, welcome a motion to approve the minutes as written. I'll put one change on the record, and um, Christy brought this to my attention that I um, mix up Mike Morgan and Mark Morgan one place on the minutes. So that has been corrected, and we're putting that on the record. Uh, all Mike Morgans in the minutes should be Mark Morgan. Okay. So I will welcome a motion um, for approval of the minutes with those um, changes. I'll move to approve, Jody. Thank you. And then I have a second. I'll second. second. Wonderful. Um, there's a um, motion on the table. Any further discussion? Great. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Awesome. Great. So. Um, Courtney, since I'm working off two devices, could you tell me what's next on the agenda? Is it just the legislative update from yesterday? We actually have next on the agenda um, a discussion by Elizabeth Joyce from the Attorney General's Office about um, our, our ability to represent the council and um, give recommendations during the legislative session. Awesome. Well, Elizabeth, thank you so much for your work and um, the extra extra work you've been doing the last few um, weeks trying to help us refine and figure out um, how we um, do this um, correctly the first time and, and really um, honor the uh, importance of our roles here on the council. So I'm going to just turn it over to you. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Thank you. And it sounds like um, I'm each time I get involved with a question or join one of the meetings of either the councils or hear what the committees are doing. It sounds like you guys are uh, very active and engaged. So um, you're doing some 
good work and I'm happy to keep trying to answer questions. Um, Courtney, let me ask, I'm not looking at your agenda. Are you also wanting to have a discussion about um, the charter document that you circulated now or was that going to be separate? I, I'm just not sure if you wanted this to be kind of a, yeah. a general I overview see. or... I haven't had a chance to send the memo that you crafted to this committee or the council. So I thought maybe first you could go through those three recommendations. One of the recommendations is the charter. And so I wasn't at the last meeting. I know we didn't necessarily make a, a motion to create a charter. So I thought we could go through the options first. And then if people wanna see yeah, what the charter really would look like, or if we wanna get into that, you can dive more deeply into that. Okay, sure. Um, so yeah, so I'm understanding that one of the questions that you guys have run into is, you know, what can this committee do once, you know, working in connection with the um, council itself, um, there's, you know, some back and forth, the committee has been looking, you know, more in depth at tracking legislation and making some recommendations and bringing those back to the council, which the council has then approved. And then um, where I'm understanding you've run into some questions then is, is what can you do as circumstances change, if there are amendments to bills and that sort of thing. And then also maybe some questions about, you know, more generally, what other activities can the committee engage in? Um, beyond maybe kind of the, the basics that you've already identified as far as um, gathering information and, and looking at legislation. And so we do have on the council's agenda some time to talk about this as well, but since the commit committee is meeting first, we can um, hit the highlights. Um, you know, my, in general, the approach for a committee is unless you have generally assumed to be um, created as, you know, advisory to the council and the council is making final decisions on, you know, policy positions or adopting recommendations, that sort of thing. Um, but there are a few ways that we can try to increase the flexibility of how you can work with the council. Um, one of those things is what Courtney mentioned is that we could create a, a charter or a mission statement for the council and, or for, I'm sorry, for the committee. And so, you know, outline some of those activities that are sort of on the committee's plate as a, as a regular matter. If there's, you know, questions or uncertainties about what activities you want to be doing. Um, and then also in the decision-making capacity um, where, legislation is being amended and you need to you know continually be responding to that we can address how to you know what what powers the committee has to act without further you know specific delegation from the council once once a position has been adopted um so again we could kind of wrap those well, what I refer to as those sort of delegated functions or delegated authorities into a charter. And then that's something that the council would adopt. And then it kind of, <laughs> whatever powers and activities that it lays out, you know, you've kind of got your marching orders. Um, and then the other approach is just to make sure when, you know, when you're seeking approval from the council for a specific measure that you kind of think down the line and, say, you know, if this is amended, you know, do we have the authority to determine the committee's position on amendments without coming back to the council, or do we need to come back to the council each time it's amended? Um, and that could be, you know, just on a, a vote by vote um, decision or basis, you know, if there's a specific proposed bill, you know, maybe the, the council would be comfortable saying, okay, you know, on this bill, the, the committee has the authority to take a position on future amendments, or maybe there's a particular bill that the council would say, we're okay with this language, but it's, you know, of enough interest that we want you to come back and give us an update if there's any changes. So, you know, that could be handling it just on a, 
a case by case matter. And, you know, I think what you've, where you're at right now is you've just identified that this is, this is something that um, would be great to be able to anticipate, you know, either again, on as a, a charter as kind of a, a long term basis. So you have this sort of the framework set up going forward or just, you know, being able to anticipate it on on a case by case basis as things come up. So I, I maybe I'll pause there, but also I'll say that um, we have a draft charter started if you wanted to you know, consider that approach. And that could be something that the committee develops a little bit that you can identify what your priorities are, what your questions are for the council, and then bring that to the council for consideration at, you know, we, I think we do have it um, space carved out on the next agenda or a future meeting, you know, whenever you're ready and then um, develop that for the long-term plan. And then we can also talk about if there's something that you need that you think you need approval from the council from at the next meeting that you don't have already. Um, that can be something that you bring to the council at the at next week's meeting. Thank you, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Um, so um, I wanted to just kind of pause there a second and just let you all know, we're gonna talk about this later, but already there were some attempted or maybe a possible um, amendments to the bill that um, it would be hard for us to respond to if we didn't kind of look at this and I think this is great timing for next week with the Forest Health Council to be able to have this discussion and see if folks are looking for us to be able to be a little bit more nimble because if we have our meeting on the first and then we don't meet again till the 11th I don't know what that looks like to try to or we do or we just keep going and saying we're uh, focused on the original intent of the bill so just kind of curious um, for any uh, what your thoughts are on that, and then if anybody has any questions for Elizabeth. Just overall, what do you guys think about this approach, Mr. Morgan? Uh, I'm trying to take this all in, but I guess my thoughts are this. I would hate to fail to be nimble enough right now on the bills that are at the legislature. I don't want to be tied up trying to make a process right now. Uh, I guess I'm, I'm thinking about that we go forward the best we can with the advice that we're getting and then try to structure this a little bit later on so that we can take our time and do a good job of it. I. Uh, that's just my initial thoughts as all. Well. I was, I don't have a real hard agenda set in stone, but I, I would hate to chase this rabbit to the detriment of the other things we're trying to do. Other than that, I'd be wide open. Um, so I, I don't know. I think if we, there's, I don't know if you've got to see the proposed changes in the charter. It gives us a little more um, flexibility or structure. So. Um, but overall, I think we can make this simple and not be chasing a process, but maybe just giving us a little bit of um, clarity and kind of a, that mission statement we talked about that you were all interested. So um, any other uh, questions for Elizabeth or um, concerns about looking at this? Julie? Yeah, no, no concerns and maybe not a question, but just a comment, um, you know, sort of thought on it. I think it's helpful and I, I wasn't aware that that was one of the tools in the toolbox. So I, I appreciate you sharing that as, you know, how do we get the flexibility? How do we get the authority, right, to be moving forward in a way that's consistent with the legislation for the council and making sure we're not overstepping or creating an unintended problem, which is I think what, what the charter you put together does. I think the timing's great that we've got a larger council meeting coming up and getting their guidance on understanding what can we do, how quickly can we do it to create that nimbleness. I think, I think that's really great. So I appreciate, you know, you putting that together, Elizabeth, and helping us understand about that tool because I, I wasn't aware how we would get there. So thank you for that. Samantha has her hand raised. 
Yeah, I agree. Thanks so much for being here, Elizabeth. I, you know, in the event that the full council is not as comfortable with us taking, you know, kind of the reins on some of these, I mean, what is the route? Like, I know we've talked about emails, but I know there's a concern about having communication go out when we don't have a public meeting. I mean, what is plan B or C in case we can't do this this way? Um, I, so I think what you're asking is if if you don't have sort of a, a broader authorization, how can you get the council's input more frequently? Um, I mean, a couple options would just be, you know, maybe during the legislative session, you do schedule, you know, monthly meetings um, of the council and that they're just, those are, short and targeted meetings um, so that you do have a more frequent check-in point. You know, I, I don't know what you, it, it, it's, I know it's hard to anticipate what, what frequency would be needed on that level. Um, and then there is, I think, the option of doing an emergency meeting if there is um, input needed on, and I'm sorry, I'm trying to pull up your bylaws, but I believe that um, certain members or as if you have a certain number of um, votes on holding an emergency meeting, um, that is something that you can trigger to um, get people together on an as needed basis. Um, and then again, I think the what I see is maybe the, the middle ground approach is trying to, you know, if you don't have this in a charter um, at the time that the council takes a position on, you know, adopting or supporting a measure to try to build in there what your sideboards are, um, you know, at, at what points you need to come back to the council of, you know, any amendment the council wants to see or, any amendment that changes, you know, this certain provision the council wants to see, and you know, try to try to anticipate um, what what leeway you would need for a specific measure. You know, that could be another way of handling it. Thank you, Elizabeth. Does that help answer your question, Samantha? Yeah, I think. Jody, it sounds like we should be very clear next week about how frequently we're meeting as a group, um, just because, yeah, ledge session moves quick, so we can add that. Yeah, I think it's important. Um, there's a lot of moving and happening pieces, and there, um, there's a lot of other folks who are interested in this bill, and um, and in the future, um, you know, just having this in place for future sessions would make, you know, we're doing a lot of this work now to try to figure out how, how like we've, we've gotten this car and now we're figuring out how all the bells and whistles work and how it works, how it runs. And so we're just trying to figure out what other tools we need. Certainly, I don't think we're trying to, um, we're, we're trying not to be, you know, the voice of the whole council, we're not trying to go rogue or something. It's just they're trying to help um, keep our, our, our priorities kind of, on, onward to the finish line, that's how we intended. Christy, we haven't heard from you. Do you have any questions or concerns about this? Okay, so it sounds like we are kind of, anybody have any questions? Or Mr. Morgan, I see you kind of raised your hand. Yes. Uh I think one thing, we're a forest health council. We provide a diversity of views for the people who are legally entrusted to do their job and have the authority to do so. Legislators, Director McCombs, people within our state. And so <clears throat> we're not creating legally binding policy. We're providing an effort to help them and advise them in their duties, and they use us as a resource. So uh, 
I take that very seriously, but I also realize that by the very nature of it, that, that <clears throat> that's a pretty limited authority. They can, and we're gonna have some things in the future where we're gonna have some very diverse views. We're not gonna come up with a set recommendation or policy, but we're gonna come up with some ideas and some opportunities. And then those people who are legally bound to implement these policies are gonna do their job. So I think it's kind of important we keep that in mind as we as we look for kind of our role here in this. I appreciate that, Mr. Morgan. Um, so I I think this proposed um, change in the charter just to give us some flexibility, and I like that piece that our legislative council um, or committee is has to be unanimous. If any, if we're meeting and having that. Um, uh, any of those um, recommendations or things or moves that we have to make for any bills, it has to be unanimous inside the legislative council outside of the regular council meetings. So I don't know if everyone felt more comfortable with it having with that unanimous um, wording. Julie. I actually, I had a different view on that. I, I, I was concerned about the unanimous piece. And mainly because, you know, in thinking about what Mr. Morgan just said, I, as I think about what this may look like in the future, I can envision a scenario in which there's an amendment to a bill coming forward. And the council as a whole has divergent views on what they want those entrusted at the legislator to hear from the Forest Health Committee. And that may not be unanimous. And so just being able to inform, here's what the council is thinking. Here's what the council is worried about. Here are the issues and the things we're talking about. And so just kind of figuring out how to do that with a unanimous voice, I, I guess, gave me pause. Like, is it more a majority voice on here are the, here are the things we move forward with? I just wasn't sure about that piece. No, I appreciate you bringing that up. So would something more like a two thirds majority, like a 65% or 67% with that? Um, I'm just curious. Cause I think yeah. the I'm, I'm wanting us to kind of come to a consensus or talk about today, cause we do have this opportunity to change that or bring this forward with the council next week so that we have a more flexibility for the rest of this session. And that's, and if not, if you guys aren't comfortable with this, then we would, you know, we would not have that flexibility probably for this session, and we'd have to have this bigger conversation at further council meetings. So, um, but I know Elizabeth really worked hard on this along with Courtney, and I think um, Angela had some say, some work in this too, right before she left. I think there's some thoughts on this. So it's not, it's I know Elizabeth and Courtney really thought over this and um, looked at that wording. So does anyone else have other concerns about this? So is there, a, uh, since Julie brought up the unanimous, is there, a, um, what is the thought process? And I don't know, Liz, but let us know if that's not okay to do, but more of a two thirds majority of the, of the council in that one paragraph. Is that, um, to be, and I don't know, Courtney, I know you guys kind of have graphed that. Is there any concern with it moving to a two thirds majority? Or, you, or just the majority? Because I, I just want to kind of, I'm listening to others that have that, that pause with that unanimous. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll start, I guess, um, a response on that. I, the, you know, from my perspective, there's no, um, no reason that you can't change it. Um, the, you know, the consideration there was to try to balance um, having the council's approval to move forward with certain things, but since the committee is just a subset of the members of the council, that you know maybe there were certain measures that um, the council would want the committee to be unanimous on to have certainty that you know that's that's a um, broadly supported <laughs> um, measure to move forward with without checking back in with the council. But if there is, you know, dissent among the committee, maybe that's a trigger point when you do need the council input. And so that was um, the rationale for starting there. But again, this is, you know, whatever 
you know, what we're again, what we're working on here is to have a recommendation that you would bring back to the council to approve to say, yes, we as a, a whole body are comfortable with this approach. And so, um, you know, however you want to adjust those measures, you know, you have the leeway to do that. And then it's just a, a matter of, you know, whether the committee is comfortable bringing that to the council and, and then how the council feels on it. Thank you for that. So just trying to make sure that um, we're honoring Elizabeth's time and I don't want to rush this, but um, how does everyone feel um, about bringing the forward to the council next week so that we have more less flexibility? Is there anyone on this group that is not comfortable with that, moving, moving this as a suggestion forward to the council for discussion and, and possible approval for next week? Cody, are you talking about the charter? The charter, yep. I have no so, concerns. Yeah, no concerns. Yeah, no, I I think we should make them aware that we think it's a tool we need. And I'm I'm just trying to figure out like, is that the most flexible? Does that give us the <laughs> the most opportunity to get as much done, right? So we're really effective. Um, I, I think it's fine, and, and that may be a piece that you know the larger council focuses on or doesn't um, in terms of you know cohesive uh, agreement of the committee. But I could go with it either way. I was just trying to think about maximum flexibility for this committee to to act without having to within those guardrails, as you said, Elizabeth. So how about? We how would we bring up the two thirds and the, the unanimous, and kind of bring up both. Um, I don't know if that's possible. Um, I mean, if they, I guess is that Elizabeth. We could kind of say we had kind of that. We we were kind of at um. We weren't sure which one, but we wanted to either two thirds or unanimous, and have that as a full council discussion to make sure what their level of comfort is too. So, um, what does everyone think about that? So I'm a little hesitant about the two thirds just because that puts a lot of power into the hands of what could just be a few people. And I, I feel like the total number of the, the council at a whole, I, I just am wary of how that might be perceived. So I am more supportive of a unanimous. And if there is dissent, I feel like that's when the full council should be brought to the table. But again, just my, my immediate thoughts right here. Mr. Morgan. Yes. Uh, back to what I said earlier, uh, we are an advisory council. We're not creating law here. So I could go, I could go either way. One thing that I have learned in dealing with a lot of groups over the years, the uh, unanimous item is a high bar, but generally it has a great deal of force when you reach it on those items and uh <clears throat> i've have have been myself been given pause sometimes on something that i was really adamant about with somebody that i really respected a lot said no and it made myself or other people rethink what we were trying to do and probably got a better product for it so uh that's one thought and uh the other one would be that, uh, uh, again, you have to be an advocate for a position that you're trying to make. And, and unfortunately, or fortunately, our legislators value that very, very highly. You know, they get, they get bombarded by lobbyists, a true concerned citizen groups and stakeholder groups. They put a lot of store in what they say. So on the one hand, if you, if you don't participate in that, you don't move forward things that you feel very strongly about. On the other hand, if you uh, try to, as a group, sometimes you can't achieve that, so you're more effective. I guess I'm looking for the freedom to, to support my individual opinions and separate that opinion from groups and you know the use of the group when everybody's in agreement i'm fine with that or the freedom to pursue 
Uh, my positions outside that group, I consider that a right of being in this country. I guess that's how I can put it. So thank you. I'm just going to take a moment just to flash their two bill sponsors. Say hi, everybody, the first. <laughs> hey. Oh, sorry. I just, sorry, everybody. I just, they just happened to walk by, and I wanted to just let us wave hi for a moment. So, um, so I think that's a really good point. There is a lot of power with the unanimous um, position, and we have been, I would say, majority of the time, an unanimous group on this. So we we really built a lot of trust and rapport here, and I think that has really helped us with these priorities and going forward. So. Um, I can go either way either. Um, I don't think, I, I certainly am not okay with just the majority. I think you're right, Samantha and everyone, that yeah. we don't want we don't want to be, um, we're not trying to be a voice for the whole, well, we're representing these, but we're not, we definitely don't want to be um, um, deleting or not valuing that all the council's um, voices. And I can say that this bill already has had a lot of lobbyist um, at least when I've been in certain rooms, a lot of lobbyist pressure on trying to change things. And so I think it was really important that um, Mr. Morgan and I were in that stakeholder meeting, even though we wore our hats appropriately. Um, cause, and then also even yesterday, um, some last minute um, things. So I think it was really, it's important to think about this. Um, so I, I read through those, that charter pretty good. I'm good with bringing it to the full council as written. And then we can maybe spark that conversation about the two thirds or the or the anonymous. Um, but I appreciate everyone's thought on this. So, if if there's no other further discussion, is there a motion to um, take this charter as written to present and have? And I'm hoping Elizabeth and Courtney would be able to present that, and I can back that. Could help you back that up um, to, at the council meeting. I think it's on the agenda too, correct? Or is it not? This is not specifically on the agenda. We have an update from the legislative committee. And so that's sort of a space for the legislative committee to to get into whatever topics needed. Legislative update, uh, maybe the adoption of a charter, things like that. OK, Samantha, you have your hand raised. Yeah, just a clarifying question. Are, could we accept Julie's version? She had a few updates that she sent that I think clarified the committee versus the council. And I apologize. I um, I've been um, pretty. I'm running with my hair on fire the last 24 hours. Was that just recently, Julie? Like in, last night? This morning, or, yeah. And it, it, most of it was was just as Samantha said, just sort of clarifying edits. I did ask the question about um, the unanimous piece, but based on the feedback from Samantha and Miss Mr. Morgan, I, I I can appreciate why unanimous would be perhaps the better choice. So with my, um, I would call um, administrative edits <laughs> more than anything, because I think Elizabeth did a great job. Um, I would be perfectly clear about one thing. I can go either way. I don't want to influence anybody because I feel, feel very strongly about the fact that we are an advisory council. And so the actual legal determinations will be hopefully taking our advice into consideration but that decisions will be made at that level Courtney, i just want i would like the committee to comment or make a decision on one blank at the very bottom of the charter before we move it forward so we're discussing its committee procedures decisions of the committee will be made by blank so it can either be a majority or a quorum and this is different than like voting on say um amendments to bills this is sort of like when the committee votes on anything else like electing a chair or um passing other types of um motions and so i don't know if we also want that to be unanimous or if we want a little bit more flexibility when the committee is voting on more just like commit committee actions that are not related to specific bill um, language or amendments. And it's section 5D. 
I, can you guys hear me? It's Christy Belton. Yes. We oh, can yes, hear you. Christy. Go ahead. Okay. I'm sorry. It's it, I'm having a little bit of trouble hearing everybody. Um, but it, can we fill in that last bit blank that you were referring to? Um, can we just say by quorum? Uh, do we do we need to get down to two thirds versus versus unanimous? Um, do we have to be that specific, or can we just leave it as a as a quorum and then however we decide um i might not be super clear about all that but um this feels a little weedy to me like maybe we're you know focusing too much on that and i um mr morgan's comments about being an advisory committee um you know are we can it be that simple we're just an advisory committee and decisions get made when well, I think this is, are you, I, I'm assuming that Courtney means this is made by decisions like approving the minutes, approving a president or a chair or everything is by a majority, right? This is not the legislative recommendations. This is more for the, um, like proving the minutes has got only a majority and approving a chair. That's, I think that's the, that's where this part is, right? Courtney? Yeah. Is that and so that's quorum. So I'm happy. I mean, I mean, it's up to the committee, but yeah, that's essentially the question. Is it is everyone good with just having a quorum and having a majority of the quorum? Okay, great. Sitchi, are you good with that? I'm having trouble. Jody, yours is very, very muffled, and I, I can't decipher it. But um, Can someone so I'm, I'm sorry. I just for some reason can't hear it. Are you good with quorum and the majority of the quorum for being in that blank? I'm not sure. I apologize, you guys. Can someone else just? I, can, Courtney, I just can, can't understand. Courtney, can you read yeah, I'll, what I said? I'll summarize. Um, Christy, we are proposing making most of the decision, you know, general committee decisions by quorum, which is how we've been doing it this whole time, and then only making um, legislative bill language sort of um, motions be unanimous need unanimous okay, thank you yeah that sounds good to me thank you okay so in the interest of time because we have a quick some more things to cover and i want to honor and i think daphne jumped off but um in the interest of time um is, it sounds like we're at a consensus so can i have a motion to approve um with um the few administrative edits from julie um and keeping unanimous and then filling in as the majority of the quorum. Do I have a motion to approve the charter to um, recommend to the Forest Health Council next week? I would really? make that motion. Great, thank you. Um, a second? I'm happy to second. Great. Um, any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Looks like that's unanimous. Thank you all for that discussion. Elizabeth, thank you for your work and Courtney, your work on this. Is there, is that, was that clear enough with that motion and the changes? Any other concerns or something we needed to kind of, um, that I, we did not get covered in the motion for those, did those edits and stuff? No, I think that was good in that, um, you know, gave Courtney the um, direction to make any, you know, accepting red lines and any administrative edits. Um, and then we can flag anything that's um, changed before the draft that goes to the council. Um, I did just want to also say that, you know, in the event that the council does not adopt a charter at the next meeting, um, you know, just whether they need more time or if there's other issues for discussion, um, you may want to be prepared to also, as part of your update, um, propose, you know, a, a standalone um, motion or discussion point for what authorization you think you need to be able to respond to, you know, the bills that you're working on now. Um, so you may want to have that, you know, back up if the charter is not 
what the council is ready to do, you know, at this meeting, then can they give you authorization to move forward with the amendments that you're reviewing or, or whatever it is that you need on those specific measures. So just to flag that um, as part of the discussion to have with the council. That's great. Um, I think that's a great point. Um, thank you for that. Um, so that means, um, I guess, call out for all of us on this council as I pre as we all present on this um, with the legislative update. Um, um, please um, maybe raise your hand and chime in to kind of say how important this is. And we kind of, um, in case, you know, we have a plan A now and a plan B. And, and so maybe just be ready for um, providing your input at that time. So does that sound like a great plan? Or a good plan, decent plan? Mr. Morgan, does that sound okay? I tell you very well, right there. Oh, so just to get us ready for the meeting next week to be able to, um, as I present this, if there's questions, just to kind of show our commitment or our consensus support for um, this this charter or for a different motion so that we have that flexibility for the session. So just kind of all be ready for that. Does that, am I really, at that, am I having it harder? Should I try to switch your pieces? I think I heard what you said and I would be fine with that. Okay, great. Well, Elizabeth, um, we appreciate your time today and thank you for all your work and we'll um, we'll move on, so. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. I'm just I'm gonna hang out and listen to the to your update. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see how this ends up, huh? <laughs> I I, I want to hear what you're working on. Mm -hmm. oh, I think you might have just lost Jody. Okay, is that better? Yes. Yes. Okay. Let's do that. So um, I think my my eye my earphones died. So um, our next item on our agenda is kind of just a quick update on the bill um, that we had. So first, Mark, um, Ms. Morgan, and I, um, the stakeholding process we um, we attended with the representatives, uh, the sponsors, um, Senator State Senator uh, Jacques Lewis and uh, Lisa Cutter. And um, that was a really good, I think that was a good move. We were very cautious to how we, we were very clear, both of us, to um, that um, issue and how we had to be very careful with which hat we were wearing. And it was good that we were there because there was a lot um, lobbyists and representatives from four-year colleges and other representatives who wanted to have kind of their, um, they wanted to push this so that four-year colleges were also available for this. And then there was some talk about money for equipment and that just seemed like a, the price tag of this was maybe going up to what our original tent was um and so um i think it was good that we were there mr morgan did i miss anything from that no i think uh being a little more blunt about it they saw some money in the water and there was almost a feeding frenzy to get away from what we were originally trying to do and i think you did great there and uh also uh as you mentioned, there was, I mean, it was really, it would have been misdirected pretty quickly. So I'm, I was glad that we could be there and keep them more focused on what we were trying to do from the industry side of things and from other groups that I understood. Our, our real need right now is for vocational outreach and, and training and, and get people in the workforce, two-year degree certificates, specific training and and that was uh getting lost pretty fast there in a search for dollars uh, uh also uh i think uh you represented the group really well what we were trying to do and the purpose for doing it so i was real happy with that and i think that uh i think they're going back to do a little bit of homework, but uh, I think we got it narrowed back up to what our intents were. The only thing that I saw there was, and this is just, we never even got to, that was the primary interest of our of our being there, but I, I felt a little bit remiss in the fact that uh, Director McCombs, we never even got a chance to talk about your nursery bill. And I kind of had my gun loaded for that and, uh, the need for that, but in 
I think going forward, if we have another opportunity, I think we need to look at that as well. Because as I looked at our discussions in the past, those were the two primary unanimous things that we were trying to do. So you got left off the list and we got to do better. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. So, um, and that was, a, I think you, um, you hit that correctly. So, um, sorry, I'm just trying to make it so you can hear me better. Um, so the next thing I wanted to move on is we did have our, um, our committee hearing in the state Senate. Um, that was yesterday afternoon. I was in person along with Courtney and Drake McCombs, um, and, uh, Daphne, our new, uh, the new legislative person for, um, the, for the uh, Department of um, Natural Resources. And I think, and then Molly Pitts um, from the, um, the timber industry, she presented with our um, committee last year and then also with the full forest health council, she gave some powerful testimony. I, I have to say, I really feel really good about our testimony. I think it really hit it home. And there was a lot of amendments that are being trying to be added to this bill. I think right now, the big things that were amended was there's two amendments, one and two, um, that one that removed the Colorado Mountain College. I still have not found out. Um, neither did the bill sponsors know how that got into the bill draft. And so they they were asking, they thought we put it there and I clarified that we did not put it there. We had, that was one of our concerns. And then um, there was another amendment. I'm gonna have to have, um, I think it was to make sure that it was expedited and it had criteria and that it was going to be the uh, community college or the, co the college board with direct consultation with the state forest service on how these would be allocated. And then we made an emphasis on um, making sure it went for existing programs and new ones. Um, and then I think they changed the sunset date by, back by two years. So, um, Courtney, did I cover all of those changes? You, yeah, you did catch those. Um, one, one thing, one amendment that they made that we didn't anticipate was that they specified that this would support two new programs and one expansion of a current program and so i don't know if that's something um you guys all feel that you want to make a comment on like as a committee or council but that's something we could possibly um discuss and then the other recommendation that they did adopt was the consultation of community colleges and the creation of educational materials for guidance counselors for high schoolers so they did also take that into consideration any questions for um, Director McCombs? Um, actually, they didn't ask any questions of, of him, but he was up with this, but they asked a lot of questions of, from Molly Pitts. Um, and uh, yeah, it was it was um, pretty, I think it's unanimous decision. Any questions about those amendments? We Could we get those out? Did we send those out to the, the legislative committee, Courtney? I will, I will send those? the amendments out. And just for folks' awareness, you know, I think it's really powerful when a stakeholder group, you know, and a industry expert sort of speak. So I just signed up for questions uh, as opposed to providing testimony, which is why I just was sitting there. But, you know, I, I think the majority of the dialogue was really focused on getting that industry perspective and then having the perspective of this group represented as well. So it was, I think it was a great hearing and everyone represented really well. And it was nice to see you name us vote at a committee. I guess I, oh, um, Courtney. one other thing to add, there was a little bit of concern about the uh, continuous appropriation to co-swap. So that might be something that changes. The committee all sort of nodded their head when they said they were concerned about any sort of continuous appropriation. So that might be cut back a little bit. So just keep, I'm just flagging that for a potential change. Um, Julie and then Mr. Morgan was just curious if there's any information on sort of next steps and scheduling with these amendments do we know how quickly more discussions might be happening i'm afraid i don't have the answer to that that i can get that from daphne or maybe someone else on the call knows um i do know there's another group of uh, folks um that really didn't talk with me at all that um 
also submitted um, um, some lobbyists for some other commissioners on the Western Slope, submitted some um, comments and amendments that I'm not sure if those are going to be accepted or not, but they did, they are lobbying for some additions. And I think some of that had to do with one of the Swift crews making it some, um, lowering some barriers for the Swift crews. Um, but I, I, don't, I do think that they're back to changing some of those, uh, writing those, and I'm hoping, I'm, um, the bill sponsors certainly are looking to us um, to make sure that we're that they're staying with kind of that original intent. But um, at least the Colorado Mount College and some of those things um, seem like that was the the first big pushback. But I I don't know because appropriations. I don't know if that's been. when it starts moving or doing something, I guess, maybe that would be okay, Courtney. I missed part of what you said, Jody, you sort of cut out. Oh, I apologize. Um, I was saying if maybe there was some movement, I think it goes on to appropriations, which I think it's, I don't know if those amendments, it goes with those, just those amendments and not any really changes before it comes out of appropriations, correct? I'm, I'm not sure, but I can follow up and get the answers to that. Great. Um, Mr. Um, Mr. Morgan? Yes, <clears throat> Director McCombs. Uh, we had two things came out of this committee, several things, but two major things, uh, that at least I'm trying to pursue. Is there a pathway or a bill currently out there that's going to address the nursery issue for the State Forest Service? If it's not here, it's not this. Uh, if you could give me a the clues to the progress of what's going on there you would be dealing with a variety of other groups or a variety of other sponsors is there a pathway clear to get to where we need to get yeah i'll give you a quick update on that um so the bill has not yet been introduced uh but because it did come out of interim uh committee over the summer it will be automatically introduced what there are some refinements on there's some amendments being worked on to make sure that the numbers uh, as, far, as it relates to the need are represented, um, acknowledging that what went, the fiscal note and the, and the bill that went through the interim committee uh, was it perfectly aligned with what the needs are. The difference, and, and if we kind of go back to what Senator Janal and a couple other members on the interim committee were talking about, you know, we'd like to see how you're going to invest this initial uh, funding from last session before you know we consider it additional funds. That assessment's been completed. We're in the very final stages, hoping to have it today or, or Monday of releasing a report that will specifically define the true costs as well as the impact of, of those investments. And so we'll start circulating that with members um, as well as the Forest Health Advisory Council and other interested uh, stakeholders. And that will build towards um, when that when that bill and then we i've also requested through uh dhe uh support position which we're very confident will occur so we'll be able to advocate uh more more targetedly in that regard so we're moving and as soon as that bill is introduced and, and, the, and if it in addition if those um uh when it's calendared for testimony you know we would absolutely want to engage this group and seek your uh support and and uh advocacy for for yes votes there as well so uh, that's all in process it just hasn't yet um been introduced that i'm aware of that's great because i was listening for this and trying to make sure that that it was still moving along so thank you bet you we had a great visit with some members as well and we're and we're setting up some additional opportunities we had the larimer county board out uh and, and some other key stakeholders. So uh, the momentum and the and the energy and the and the uh, focus is high. And so we're going to keep it that way with releasing some of these uh, some documents that will help sort of buttress the ask a little bit more targetedly than we were able to over the summer. For next for the February first meeting, uh, Director McCombs will. I'm wondering if the council can vote to support that bill and if there will be concrete numbers for the council to yeah. view and okay and support. That's my, that's my intent. In fact, that was one of the timelines I used for staff was I wanted to have that document not just ready for members of what assembly, but more importantly, to have this group uh, be able to digest uh, those numbers so that if we could get a full council uh, vote of support, obviously that's that speaks a lot to uh, to assembly members. Great. Let's get a full vote and work for getting the full unanimous votes 
everybody gets what they need. Great, and I, I know we're out of time. I'll save, I took pictures on that nursery tour and it was, uh, I have some pretty dramatic pictures to share. I'll share that next time. So we also have, um, any other questions on that? I'm trying to honor our time and we have, uh, I think we have one more thing before we can adjourn. Does anyone else have any other questions? I actually wanted to share one more amendment. Um, we see in the workforce development bill that they added the word undergraduate into the bill a few times to discuss um, like the lack of workforce. And so I'm, I'm not sure if undergraduate degrees are really what this committee's intention was. I know we discussed associates and certificates, so that might also be something we consider if, if I don't know if you want to make more amendments or more suggestions, but that was something that was discussed a little bit right after the hearing yesterday. So um, obviously it looks like we should have this um, as a agenda item in two weeks, because I don't think the bill's moving too much in the two weeks and maybe we'll have a more updated version to kind of discuss and talk about other concerns. So, and then, um, and we'll just have to make sure we get kind of that flexibility to, um, to, to move on that. So, and those, these are good points to, to talk about that we have these concerns. So um, any other questions so we can move on to the last item? Okay, um, so uh, last item is just old business. I just kind of wanted to revisit. Um, we had some kind of um, uncomfortable conversations last meeting, and I just wanted to leave that space open for anyone who wanted to, um, say anything else or if we need to kind of wrap that up because I felt we had kind of had to rush and we all left kind of still maybe in a, a weird spot. And I uh, hope that you all know that um, as you hear, a lot of us are trying to be very careful with our lanes, but I think we built a lot of really strong relationships and rapport here and trust. And I wanted to make sure that everyone had their, their time to uh, just comment if they had further concerns. Mr. Morgan. <coughs> These kind of groups are successful when you have trust among the members and you have trust among the members when you successfully advocate, create positions, get work done. People all want to feel useful. They want to feel uh, like they're getting something done and they're making a difference. And uh, I, I think it's, it's a symbiotic relationship. It's that trust accomplishment trust accomplishment. The more trust you get, the more accomplishment you get, and the more successful you are. So I think we got a lot of really tough stuff to tackle going forward. But like I said earlier, I'm looking forward to these, these tune up jobs that we can all agree on. And we'll get to the hard stuff. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. I just I want to tell you, I thought yesterday was a great day. And I think it was really um, a testament to all of our work and everyone put in a lot of work this past few months with meeting every two weeks and we've had some really robust and engaged conversations and I want to tell you how much I appreciate and uh, all your all of you and your time and I have felt it has really been a really a, a big honor to be a part of this committee and I just really value all of your perspectives and I just want to say thank you Julie yeah, I just wanted to add, I, I, I don't have any concerns with where it was left. I, if anything, it, it gave me more confidence in where this committee will go. I mean, I think we're not always going to have easy, simple, all stack hands conversations. There was there was some concern. It was discussed. It was worked through. And I, I thought that was a really good example early on of how we may need to function together. So I'm no concerns remaining at all. Great, I appreciate that perspective, Julie. I think we definitely had a test drive there, so that was great. So, um, well, any other comments for the for the bigger group or any um, concerns or any other things to add or any big items you want on the agenda for two weeks from now? Um, I know I, I will be um, on my way to DC for the National Legislative Conference. And so um, thank you, um, Director McCombs, appreciate um, all of that. And uh, um, so I will be calling from the airport, unfortunately, because I'm on my way to the DC for the environment and land. Hopefully I'll be better, I'll have I'll get better ear pods for that one. So if that I'll take a mission to adjourn. I would so move. Second.
This moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Hey, Courtney, can you hold on just for a second? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Morgan.